Let's begin by looking at how we create threads. What do we mean by that? This is the means by which we can run a function or functions in parallel or seemingly in parallel. So I've got two functions, one called count up, one called count down. We can see what's inside them. And they're very simple and very contrived. We've got a shared variable here called I shared, and count up simply increments it a fixed number of times, and count down decrements it a fixed number of times. Now I've added some random delays in there as well, just to randomize things up a little bit. So how do we do it? Well, central to it is, is this pthread create. The third argument of this is the name of the function. This is a function which takes a general pointer as an argument and returns a general pointer. And pthread create for countdown as well. Calling pthread create will run that function in a separate thread. The other arguments, um, so we've got t0 here, which is of type pthread underscore t. It's an unsigned long integer. And uh, that is essentially a handle to that thread. We don't need, we need to refer to that later. And we refer to it here, for example, in the join. And, and what a join will do is simply wait for that thread to finish before proceeding. So on that basis, let's actually see this in action. Now, in each of these two functions, count up and count down, I write a u for an up and d for a down. And when we run it, we'll see that this is exactly what's happening. And you might also notice that it's not an up, then a down, then an up and a down. Sometimes it's two ups, sometimes it's three downs. In fact, the up finished a long time before the down did, as we can see by the end of this. So it's not entirely in our control. It, it all comes down to the scheduler. So we see those two functions running at the same time. But we also notice this strange phenomena. The value of i shared at the end was minus 42. Well, if I run it again, let's have a look. We run it, wait, we've got minus five now. So something is wrong. And there's nothing wrong with the logic of the code. In the next demo, we'll have a closer look at this phenomena known as variable corruption caused by a race condition. Let's now have a look at variable corruption or race conditions in this case. So what have I got here? I've got two functions, count up and count down, and they share a double, f shared. Count up, predictably, increments that value a fixed number of times, and count down, decrements it the same number of times. Now, just to prove there's no bug in the code, I've, uh, I've got two modes I'm going to run this code. And this is the first one. I'm going to basically create this thread and run count up, and I'm going to block until it's finished, and then I'm going to run count down and block until it's finished. So in other words, I'm going to control the sequence. They're not going to be allowed to run concurrently. Now if I run that, you see count up, count down running, and the result is indeed zero, because we've counted up the same number of times as we've counted down. But those two functions were not allowed to run concurrently. They were running sequentially. Now I'm going to comment that out. Now I'm going to just fire off count up and count down as two separate threads and allow them to run at the same time. And I leave it to the scheduler of the operating system to decide which one gets a turn and for how long. We block on both of them so that we don't go any further until they're both finished and then look at the final result. So if I run that, let's have a look and see what the final result is. And we see it is not zero but it's some strange floating point number, which is nonsense. So I've not changed the functions. All I've done is changed the order in which they were run. In the first case, they were run sequentially, no problem. But when they're run concurrently, there's variable corruption due to a race condition. Let's look at how we could use a mutex semaphore or lock to avoid the race condition. Well, where we reference a shared resource, such as a variable, and at least one of those threads performs a modify, then we need to mark that as a critical section. So around the critical section, 
we have this pthread mutex lock and we pass in a lock, mutex lock here. Perform critical section and then at the end using the same lock we unlock it. So pthread mutex unlock. In the countdown it's exactly the same. pthread mutex lock, mutex lock. Now notice mutex lock is common to both. Right? And we can take that and release that in a thread safe way. So in other words, there's it, whichever function runs first, it takes the lock and runs its critical section. The other thread will try and take the same lock and block until it's unlocked by the other thread. And then it can enter. So let's actually see what happens. So I'm going to click debug. So we create this lock with pthread mutex in it. Run that thread for count up, that thread for count down. We're going to block on the first one. Wait for that to finish. It's finished. Block on the second one. Well, that's already finished. And then we print out the final result. And indeed, F shared is zero. So we now have thread safe code. And then, being good citizens, we destroy the lock because it's using up resources and the program quits.